Hey everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and today we're going to talk about Bill HR 127. I printed this bill out this morning and I've been reading it for a while here and I wanted to share some thoughts with you. You've probably seen something like this pop up before or watched a video of this previously, but this is obviously important stuff and if you're not aware, well then, then I hope to educate you. But basically, this is a bill that was introduced on January 4th, and it's in committee right now. Uh, today is the 3rd of February. And the, uh, it's bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, you remember how they've always been saying they're gonna come for our guns, they're gonna come for our guns, and, and maybe you could write that off as, oh, they're crazy. When I first got into guns, I thought, those people are insane, you know, that's never gonna happen. I hope I don't get that crazy. This is the bill. This is the bill that starts where they come for your guns. This is it right here. And if you don't believe me, you can read it yourself. It is by far the most draconian rights trampling law I have read in a long time. Uh, it, it, it completely ignores the fact that we have a Second Amendment, paves right over that with European-style gun control that is incredibly aggressive and will eliminate your personal rights in a heartbeat. So, let's dig in, shall we? So first, right off the bat, they want to establish licensing. Uh, licensing for the, the possession of firearms or ammunition in the United States. Uh, and registering with the ATF. Okay, so let's stop right there. So first of all, it's a license to possess firearms or ammunition, okay? Meaning that you can't just own bullets. Bullets that you can go buy over the counter anywhere you want to. There's not even a license to sell bullets in this country. Uh, however, they wanted to make it so that you had need a license to buy and possess bullets. Okay. Uh, also then, of course, firearms. You need a license to possess that because, you know, why not? They want to put that in the hands of the ATF who can't even get you your, you know, license to buy your can for nine months. Then on top of that, they want to do registration. Now let's talk about registration here. Every country in the history of the world that has ever registered guns has then confiscated guns. That is a 100% fulfillment ratio. Show me one historical example of a country that registered guns that then did not, in some form or fashion, confiscate guns. Show me it. Just show me one case where that happened. Because you won't be able to find it. There is no historical example of that at all. Every country ever that has registered guns has then confiscated guns. 100% of the time. Registration only leads to one place. There, there's only one reason you want to register guns. It's so that you can go get them. Another thing on registration, it's not always the country or the government that registers the guns, that is the government that confiscates the guns. For example, in Germany in the 1920s, uh, before Hitler rose to power, the, the German uh, Weyer Republic at that time registered guns, okay? Well, Hitler comes into power, you know, five, 10 years later, guess what he does? He confiscates them all because he's, a, of course, going to go commit genocide on his people, right? So he confiscates the gun. He already knew where they were, and he went and confiscated them, which is also one of the major reasons there was never an uprising in Germany among the civilian population. They did not have the means, right? They, just, they simply didn't have the means. There were cases where the military, uh, military officials you know, tried to assassinate Hitler. I think there was a total of 17 different assassination attempts. However, nothing ever came from the civilians because they did not have the means. Okay, you wonder, oh, how did Hitler take over? How was it so bad? Because the population was disarmed. That was a big part of the problem. I digress. Uh, the registration, of course, will include the make, the model, the serial number, the identity of the owner, the date the firearm was acquired, and where it will be stored. If it's ever going to be loaned to someone, you have to give notice to the ATF. Uh, here's the, the best part. So this registry is going to be stored in a database, which is currently illegal, but they have a provision to repeal that. Uh, and then the contents of the database are accessible to all members of the public. That means anyone 
could go to the database and find out exactly which guns you own, where you live, and where they're stored. So if you ever want to steal someone's guns, you get a free list of, of where to go steal stuff from. So my understanding is there are three different kinds of licensing. Uh, there is a general license, there's an antique firearms license, and then there's a military style of uh, license. The licensing, you need to be 21 years old, you have to do a criminal background check uh, with NICS, which you have to do every time you buy a gun anyway. There's a psychological evaluation. That one's scary, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, you have to do a training course that includes uh, 24 hours of training, uh, and you have to get an insurance policy, which will cost you, uh, I think, $800. We'll see if we can find that. Then there's the antique firearms license deal, which, you know, basically the same thing. You have to prove that it's antique. You got to describe the manner in which you're going to display it. Um, whatever. The military style one. So again, I, is my understanding is this is on top of the general license requirement. Okay, so if you wanted to own military style, you'd, you need two two different licenses. Again, this is another 24 hours of training uh, and live fire training, so they include live fire in this one. You have to get a psych eval, uh, which has to be <laughs> has to be conducted by a licensed psychologist that's approved by the Attorney General. Uh, the psychologist can uh, in include an evaluation of other members of your household if they desire. It's at their discretion. And they can also interview uh, your spouse, your ex-spouse, uh, other family members or other associates you have uh, to, determine, to determine the state of the mental, emotional, and relational stability of the individual in relation to firearms. So they can go interview your ex-wife and you can guess how that's going to go. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, some of this is admittedly confusing. And again, I've, I read it for an hour and I, I don't have the full grasp of it. So if you have a better grasp of it than me, you can comment below and we can have a good time. So again, my understanding here is that every year you're going to have to renew the license. The fee for the license is $800. So that's every year for the first five years. You have to pay $800 just to have a license to have your rights. Imagine if we made people pay $800 every year to have the freedom of speech or to have the government not come search your stuff when they want or to vote. Imagine how that one would go over. Voting is not even a right. They define military uh, style assault weapons. You know, it's, it's the same language that was in like the assault weapons ban in the 90s, really. You know, if it has a forward grip or if it is made by these companies or it's copies of these companies or it's an AR or an AK or an FAL or a Steyr AUG gets a special mention uh, or a Tech 9. You know, if it's got a bayonet mount or a flash suppressor or a grenade launcher, that's actually in the bill, grenade launcher. Certain kinds of pistols, you know, basically like the, the, AR, the rifle pistols is what they're talking about. They give a bunch of qualifications there. Semi-automatic shotguns that have folding stocks and whatever are much more scary. Um, yeah. So you also can't loan your gun to someone else unless they have a license. And then even then you have to get permission and notify the attorney general of who you're going to loan it to and when and how long. You have to get insurance, uh, which you have to pay the government for. I'm not, it's not clear if that's a part of the original $800 fee for your license or if that's a separate insurance. Okay, then we get to the penalties. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure if these penalties apply to this section or existing laws that was kind of unclear to me. So if you know, you can let me know. Uh, but the penalties are pretty bad. I mean, you're talking about you know, seventy-five thousand to one hundred fifty thousand dollars fine, fifteen to twenty-five years in jail. You know, ten to fifteen years in jail. Just a bunch of different penalties that they're adding on here for different things. They also outlaw uh, fifty cal ammunition or greater because why not? <laughs> and as if this all wasn't bad enough, they want to outlaw uh, large capacity ammunition magazines. Uh, which it is unlawful for any person to possess a large capacity ammunition feeding device. So just possession, just period. Just no grandfathering, no nothing. It's just outlawed. Uh, well, what's a, what's a large cam capacity? 10 rounds. 10 rounds. So 17 round mag? Felony. They do give you a provision that you can keep 22s. So that's it. 
Uh, that's me going through the bill there. Again, if you haven't read this bill yourself, I would invite you to go read it. Uh, if you haven't, if you're not aware of this or aware of what's going on, please become aware. Uh, it completely ends the Second Amendment in this country, which is a law. I'd just like to remind everybody. Uh, however, this would just contradict that law, and, and of course, which one do you think they're going to enforce? The Constitution, the High Holy Law, or this new made-up fangled one, right? So, if you haven't read it, if you're not educated on it, please go read it. Please go look at it yourself. I'm not making this up. This is the most egregious assault on your rights in your lifetime. I, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that, because it's the beginning of the end. With this bill, they would strip all guns from people. Is it even enforceable? Is it even possible? I don't know. We have more guns than people in this country. God bless America. But I, 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 this is what they're trying to do. If you're wondering what you can do about this, uh, I would highly recommend you look into the Firearms Policy Coalition. They do fantastic work to fight this bill and bills like this. So they deserve all your time and money you're willing to give them. Uh, additionally, email, call your Congress people and your senators now, like today, and let them know that this is gar garbage and trash and they should deny it. It should be DOA. We're not going to talk about what would happen in this country if this bill actually passed. That's a different video, but I'm sure you can imagine how that's going to go. Stop it now so we don't get to that part. Do brave deeds and endure.